Hello and welcome to K2AV's Make Pretend AV Setup Show. My name is Jasky, and if you haven't tuned into any of the previous episodes, what we do here is we have a theoretical client with some theoretical requirements and a budget, and we design an AV solution to meet their needs. Today we have a very special episode where we actually get to be a fly on the wall to a theoretical consultation. We have our technical director, Chris Patton, who will be chatting to Tim, who is the owner of a bar and is looking to set up an audio solution. But let's jump into that conversation and get on with the episode. Hi Tim, thanks for coming in. Hi Chris, yeah, thanks for your time. So we're looking for the sound system for this new bar. It's got two areas, so we want to be able to have the volume of the speakers in each area you know, controlled differently. Um, it's probably going to be around 200 people um, you know, that will fit into the venue, but it's important on a Friday night because that's when the city is really busy. We want to be able to you know, have a DJ and you know, turn the music up for dancing. Uh, but we're not looking for like a, a nightclub system. Um, I'm thinking, look, my budget's ideally around the $20,000 mark. Um, what do you think? Um, okay, well, I've had a look at your floor plans and, and for a space of this size, around the 200 person capacity, I understand, especially with bars nowadays, aesthetics is really important. So what we would choose would be an eight inch speaker paired with a sub. That'd basically be a full range system, which will allow you to be able to turn the system up at night when you need for your DJs and things like that. And we would also have a digital processor, which would basically be, you know, the brain of the system, which will control all of the audio. Uh, eight inch speakers, eight inch sounds like a bit small, right? So what's, a, what, what's an eight inch speaker? It's funny actually, when people look at an eight inch speaker, everyone's like, oh, this is, you know, it's quite small. However, when we actually take the low frequencies out of a speaker and send them through the subs, an eight inch speaker can actually handle quite a lot of volume. Uh, to give you an idea, I mean, look, the eight inch cabinet, the actual speaker cabinet itself will be about this big. They're a good sort of in the middle. They're not too big uh, that you've got this big boxy look on the walls, which kind of ruins the interior design. And they're not too small that they'll distort when you give them volume. So it's kind of the sweet spot before you move up to the larger nightclub style system. Okay, I understand. So uh, in the eight inches, is that the actual cabinet across or is it diagonal like a TV? How do you measure that? The eight inch is actually the size of the woofer inside the cabinet. So the cabinet is obviously bigger, but if you take the actual speaker inside, it's eight inches across that. So you mentioned before something about sub, uh, sub woofer, sub woofer. Um, do we need, do we need those, aren't they, for nightclubs? Yeah, so look, when you hear subs, a lot of people think, oh, I don't want a big nightclub sound, and, and that's not what we're going for. All we're doing is we're just sending the lower frequencies through these subwoofers, and it will just give you a more full balanced sound. It's not gonna shake the room or anything like that. It's just that when we turn the volume up, if the eight inch speakers are only amplifying your high frequencies, then the, you'll just get much more of a, a full bodied sound, and it'll also be loud. And the good thing with these subs is they're quite small and compact, so you can place them you know, in many concealed positions, whether it's you know, under booths or under a waiter station or in the corners. The placement of the subs is not as important uh, because the lower frequencies you know, bounce off the walls a lot more than what you would get you know, with your high frequencies where they're more directional. Okay, so okay, that all makes sense. Also, you mentioned something about a processor, digital processor. What's that? Why, why do I need one of those? Yeah, I mean, you know, digital processor it does sound a little bit scary, but the good thing about a digital processor is we actually come in and we configure that for you. So it's a rack mount piece equipment, has no buttons or no controls on it, which a lot of people love because you know you don't have to worry about your stuff fiddling or you know changing the settings. We connect a laptop to it and using the software we actually measure all of the room's equalization. It just gives you an optimal sound and you don't need to worry about any feedback or any hissing. And it's also the control for being able to send music to each of the zones. So if you want you know, music through one zone and not the other, you know, the processor will handle all of that. Okay, so if there's no buttons on the processor, how do I control, like if I want to turn you know, the music on and off in the different areas, how do I do that? So what we actually do is the processor gets locked away in the cabinet and then what we'll do is we'll install a simple wall mount controller which will just sit on your wall and then it'll be so simple to use, it'll literally have volume up, volume down, you know, you can have zone one, zone two, on and off. So it's, it's customizable depending on your exact requirements, but the user will literally see four to six buttons, it's very basic. Okay, so I think I understand that. So you're saying, yeah, there's no buttons on the processor, but if I want the sound inside and the sound outside, how do I control the volume in those areas? 
The digital processor has several optional wall controllers. The wall controller that we would suggest for this is gonna be an LCD touchscreen. Again, that gets programmed from us, so it doesn't require any training. You'll literally have zone one and zone two off for your two different areas, and then it'll just simply be a volume for each one of those zones. So there's no fiddly buttons. You literally walk up to wall controller and just press up, down, on, off. It's that simple. Do I need training? Is it included? Do I, do I need to do any, you know, I'm hoping I don't need to do any courses to learn how to operate it. Uh, so there's no training. Literally, if you can read a volume up and volume down button um, and an on and off, that's all you need to worry about. Okay, awesome. Um, just a couple more questions. My friend Barry loves to do some karaoke sometimes. Say he wants to bring down a microphone. You know, is there additional inputs where you can plug in a, you know, a microphone? Yeah, well, the good thing with the Yamaha process, it's got a total of 12 inputs and eight outputs. So it's very flexible. If you wanna add extra iPod inputs, if you wanna add Bluetooth receivers, it's what we call a matrix. So it can send any input to any output. So at the moment with your requirements, we're probably gonna use about four inputs and four outputs. So you've got plenty of room to expand by just simply connecting into that digital processor. I mean, look, it's good as, you know, if the, the, it sounds like the system's, you know, pretty flexible um, and expandable. Um, Obviously the big question, what are, we, what are we looking at to implement a system like this? Look, um, this is a, a very standard system for us and we've done this in many small bars. Um, I would say depending um, on exactly where the rack location is gonna be, because everything's gonna, all the cabling is gonna come back to that, you're probably looking around the twenty to $25,000 mark for a system with you know, commercial grade products that is gonna last for a minimum of 10 years. I think what I'll do, look, I'll send you the floor plans if you can have a look and then send us a formal quote. No, thank you for coming in. If you have any other questions, please let us know. Audio is one of our strong points and you know we love to do these kind of projects, so thank you. No, nice, thank you. That is the end of today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching.